On January the 1st, 2014, California put into effect Senate Bill 260. The bill offered a second chance to prisoners who were under 18 years of age at the time of their crime, but were tried as an adult and sentenced to an adult prison. At the time the bill passed, over 6,500 prisoners were eligible for release under the program. To date, less than 1,000 have been. This is the story of Michael, who served over 22 years in prison before his release under the new law. The US accounts for 5% of the world's population, yet 25% of the world's prisoners. Since 1980, the US prison population has grown by nearly 800%. Today, more than 7 in every 1,000 Americans are incarcerated. By comparison, the United Kingdom, which boasts a higher violent crime rate than the US, only imprisons one in every 1,000 of its population. Helping illustrate Michael's story is Aaron, who was also recently released under SB 260 after serving over 20 years in prison. It's not only the UK that the US is beating in prison population. The US has a greater proportion of its population incarcerated than any other country on the planet, including Iraq, Iran and China. It hasn't always been this way. Before 1980, the US had a prison population that was comparable to the rest of the world. But policies introduced in the name of the war on drugs changed everything. They created a perfect storm which led to an explosion in the prison population. Tough on crime politicians supported by a misguided population and well-guided special interests protecting the privatization of the prisons and mandatory sentencing like the three strikes law all resulted in the incarceration of millions of non-violent drug offenders. The effect of the war on drugs has cost the taxpayer billions, whilst disproportionately impacting the poorest communities. Putting an offender in prison isn't always beneficial to the community. There are a number of theories pertaining to this. However, on the most fundamental level, a young man in prison is unable to work. Thus, the community is deprived of tax revenue, without which they are unable to invest in key services such as police. In turn, the community becomes less desirable to employers, resulting in less opportunity, and so causing a cycle of depression which is hard to reverse. At 11 years old, Michael was impressionable and began to associate with gang members. These people were his neighbours and school friends. As it is for many young men, in this situation, Michael's family disapproved. Although Michael began to feel his family's disapproval, he joins the gang at the age of 14. But after joining the gang, it quickly stopped being fun, and Michael gradually began looking for a way out. As he became more disillusioned, Michael stopped going to gang meetings, instead choosing to do what every teenager would, and spend time with his girlfriend. As a consequence, his standing in the gang began to slide and ultimately he is ordered to accompany a fellow member on a hit on a rival gang. By the age of 16, Michael is in court and found guilty of second degree murder, receiving a sentence of 15 years to life. If Michael had been charged as a juvenile for the same crime in the United Kingdom, sentencing would have been limited to 12 years to life. But that wouldn't have been the only difference. In the UK and Europe, there is a value placed on rehabilitation. This facilitates a smoother transition into society when prisoners are released. In 2014, the minimum wage in California was $9 per hour. Over a 40-hour work week, that equates to an annual salary of around $18,000. In the same year, it cost $62,000 to keep someone incarcerated. Therefore, it would be cheaper for the state to release a prisoner and give them a job paying double the minimum wage than it is to keep them incarcerated. After six years, a juvenile who has been tried as an adult in the UK would be eligible for release, having served 50% of their time and cost the state $372,000. As the costs keep building for the US, the ex-prisoner in the UK will have transitioned back into society and would begin to contribute tax revenues to the state. In Michael's case, being released after 22 years costs the US over $1.36 million. On this basis, 
Michael's imprisonment cost the US over a million dollars more than his hypothetical United Kingdom counterpart. This equates to a total of $6.8 billion if all 6,500 prisoners eligible for release under SB 260 were held for as long as Michael. <laughs>